Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a video talking to you about something a little bit different um, and yet still somewhat similar to some of the recent videos I've been doing. Um, this is a Century VZ 2008 and this is actually on loan from Mazama Sporting Goods. They let me take this thing out and play with it a little bit and um, I've always wanted to play with a VZ 58 style rifle and uh, we took this one in used and uh, both me and my manager who's a fellow AK uh, aficionado really couldn't keep our hands off it and we decided to do a video for the store about this rifle which meant that I got to bring this rifle in front of you guys. So a little bit of background um, at least as far as my exposure to these rifles when I was first getting into um, intermediate cartridge rifles I was trying to decide between an AK-47 and a VZ-58 and I ended up going with AK-47s, as you guys have seen many AK-47s on my channel, um, predominantly because of the uh, lack of interchangeability of magazines between this and the AK-47, and it seemed like AK mags were far more prevalent here in the US than VZ-58 mags. And while that hasn't changed, um, I think the more experience I get with this, the more I understand the appeal and <laughs> now the desire to own one of these myself. So. While this may seem very AK-esque, especially in silhouette and in caliber, um, I'm going to go ahead and run over the differences and we're just going to go muzzle to, to stock here. So this has a typical looking slant break. However, instead of 14 by one left hand threads, these are actually 14 by one right hand threads. So any of your AK-47 muzzle devices will not be compatible with this one. Uh, however, there are muzzle devices being made. The front sight post is very AK-esque and can actually be drifted uh, and uh, elevation adjusted using an AK sight tool. So that's a nice thing there. We do have a bayonet lug, however, no allocation for a cleaning rod, which is standard to my knowledge on VZ-58s. Um, and the bayonets still seem readily available here in the US. Moving back, we have a very similar looking, what looks like 45 degree gas block here up front, which does have a sling mount option there on it. However, under this handguard is something very different. So let me, should be able to pop this thing open. And we have, instead of a long stroke gas piston, this is a short stroke gas piston. So almost more like the uh, SKS. So as I move the bolt carrier back, you'll notice that that piston does not retract with the bolt carrier and that's another difference, which we'll get to here in a second. Um, so that short stroke gas piston, again, is something a little bit different from your long stroke AK-47s. Uh, it seems very functional. Obviously the SKS uh, was a successful rifle until the AK-47 replaced it. Um, however, this rifle uh, saw service for a very long time as well. And that short stroke gas piston, at least to my knowledge, didn't seem to be a big hindrance. The rear sight is very AK-esque. You have that tangent rear sight um, elevated out to, at least on this VZ-2008, out to 800. I'm going to say meters, just a guess. I don't know if it's yards or meters. Either way, out to 800, further than I can shoot with iron sights. I can guarantee that. Um, but then, like you saw, we have a very um, SKS looking bolt carrier here, at least on the surface, which does lock open on an empty magazine, which is standard. However, the big difference between this and an AK is when I pull this out, it actually stays locked open. So I can then slap in a fresh magazine, rack the bolt, and then now be able to rock and roll. Um, the receiver itself is a milled receiver. However, this is noticeably lighter than a standard even stamped AK-47. So even though milled we normally associate with heavier, this actually is fairly light. The ergonomics of the safety are also improved. I think over the AK-47, I can adjust this with my trigger finger without um, having to change my grip at all. Not very left hand friendly, but it definitely is nice for us righties compared to the AK-47. Um, now the stock here is folding on this model. Um, this one did have its uh, beaver barf <laughs> furniture as well, which is like the compressed sawdust looking furniture, which I guess was standard on a lot of VZ-58s, but I have seen this kind of wire side folder um, on these as well. And normally, when we're talking about the world of AK-47s, I'm not a huge fan of like the wire folders because it's super uncomfortable. This one actually handled pretty well and the, the side folder stock was not super uncomfortable. I definitely noticed it and it wouldn't be my first choice if I could build this thing from the ground up. 
but it's functional and it worked and it, it wasn't too unpleasant to use and I can only imagine swapping this slam frag out to something a little bit more effective would improve that even more. One other thing I didn't mention is that the safety is actually a little bit more gated than an AK-47. So instead of being able to just swipe your magazine underneath and get it open, you do really have to do kind of the retention method where you pull that magazine out and then insert a new magazine. You, I did try it a couple times just kind of swiping it, um, but given my limited exposure with this rifle, um, we haven't been able to do too much of that. The disassembly on this is also very dissimilar from an AK-47. You basically have to rock this dust cover out and then pull everything out. The bolt itself is very different because it's basically a striker fired gun, pretty much. Um, I don't know if, if there are people who would be too pedantic about that, but it, it, it's a very different operating system than an AK-47. So being that this rifle is just on loan from Mazama Sporting Goods, I didn't get a, a chance to put a ton of rounds through it, so I can't give you too educated of an opinion on it. However, I, I was fairly impressed by how this rifle handled. I, I expected with the lightweight for it to be a little bit more jumpy. However, it, it stayed on target well, it tracked well, and the recoil impulse was not nearly as bad as I expected it to be, especially with that slant break. I'm not a fan of slant breaks on AK-47s. To me, they're, they're almost, um, I don't want to say unshootable. It's just not a fun time to shoot with a slant break on most AK-47s I've used. On this, it, it, it really wasn't that bad. I'd probably still upgrade it, but um, it was definitely more than serviceable in this case. And then I also really do like the fact that it locks open. Um, you may have seen in a lot of my uh, AK-47 mags, I'm switching when I can to last shot hold open magazines. I at least like that tactile feedback um, of, hey, you're empty. Um, I get that some people aren't a big fan of it, but to me, it's a value added thing as long as either all your mags have it or all your mags don't. I'm kind of in that middle ground, but I'm working to when I can having it in everything that um, I can put it into. So I only got about 350 rounds through this thing, um, which I'd like to do a lot more, and I think after shooting it, it, it definitely piqued my interest a little bit more. Um, BZ-58s kind of fell off my radar because they seemed to be a lot harder to get a hold of. However, now um, with these BZ-2008s that I've been seeing available, as well as the uh, ones being imported by Checkpoint from Czech Small Arms, they're definitely available. The magazines are still being uh, imported. Uh, they, they still seem readily available. They, they have gone up in price though, so these things still aren't cheap. I think even this used one we're selling right around, well, I don't want to quote prices on YouTube because it, it gets bad enough, but fairly reasonable for what it comes with used. New, they're definitely considerably more expensive, closer to $1,000, but you know, kind of, it, it, it is what it is these days. I mean, even the prices of AKs has gone up quite a bit. So like I said, this is more, I guess, of an overview because I didn't get as, as many rounds through this as I would normally like to do a full length review. Um, so if you guys would be interested in me doing a more in-depth review and a more aggressive testing of this rifle, maybe run one through a couple classes, definitely let me know. I'll, I'll, I can see what I can do. Um, but again, just the, the limited amount of experience I got with this one made me a lot more open to it. I don't necessarily regret going with AK-47s, but I can definitely see the value of adding something like a VZ-58 to my collection. So um, if anyone out there has a VZ-58 or um, has experience with a VZ-58, definitely let me know what you think or what modifications you've done to improve it. I know that there's more and more options being made. I believe RS Regulate even makes an optic mount for these, which is kind of neat. Um, I, I like the prospect of mounting optics to things. So again, if you guys have experience with that, definitely let me know. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just it was just a lot of fun. And again, I want to say thanks to uh, Mazama Sporting Goods for letting me take this rifle out and play with it. And then also to my patrons for allowing me to uh, procure the ammo to be able to run through a rifle like this one. So because of that, I do post all my content over on Patreon early. Um, I also do live streams. We do, we have a Discord server set up. Um, I do a little bit more behind the scenes stuff over there. So if any of that stuff sounds interesting or you just want to financially support the channel, definitely check that out. Um, but you know, I, I'll get off my soapbox about that. So again, uh, if you want to see more about VZ58s on the channel, definitely let me know and I can see what I can do. Um, but if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and throw that down in the comment section below as well. But anyway, <laughs> with all that being said, as always, I hope you got something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.